how's it going, everybody? Come on. We are Power Lunch. We are thrilled to uh, entertain you. To get started, though, we have a little bit of a, a question. We need to get someone down here to talk with us. Has anyone ever uh, had like a really bad job that they could share with us, or like a terrible coworker or a boss, someone they could share a story about just a bad job experience? Take like five minutes. Right here. Great. Thank you so much. Come on now. How is it going? I'm John. <laughs> I'm Janet. Janet? Janet. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, so, let's get into it. Uh, right. You had a bad job experience. What, like, what led up to this? It was a traumatizing experience. Traumatizing. Okay. Um, that's, that's bad, right? Traumatizing. Um, <laughs> well, I had just graduated undergrad. College. From where, and where, where were you at the time? I was in New York yeah, okay. for undergrad, and then I came back to Washington, D.C. And um, the first job I could find was working with the ATF. And if anybody, you know, you guys, you guys know what that is? Yeah. It's alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and explosives. So, and I was doing audiovisual. So. <laughs> so, okay, so you're doing, you're like the video person yeah. for, but it's for a bunch of people who are like, Clearly, like law enforcement types. Exactly. Agents. Like alcohol, tobacco. Uh, yeah. Yeah, tobacco, agents. You know, yeah, like, like suits. Like you know? suits. <laughs> yeah. Like, like tougher guys. Yeah, like, like they would go out and they anyway. kick some ass. Exactly. Right. You know, I know what you mean by guys. Yeah. You know, guys. Yeah. Um, so, doing audiovisual, I thought, you know, okay, great, I'll be able to uh, utilize my television and film skills that I just paid lots of money for, even though I had some scholarship money, you know, um, <laughs> and be able to bring this and get. I was maybe like 21 at the time. Oh, this is great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh yeah. So I went in, <laughs> and um, <laughs> first of all, the co workers, they were all like psycho, basically. Because, um, you know, when you're working for ATF and you're looking at audio visual stuff, you know, you're seeing some crazy shit all the time. Okay. Unpack this for us. <laughs> what kind of crazy shit is, are you seeing? Well, I can say but so much. Okay, yeah. But, I mean, yeah you don't do anything uh, specific, but, like, but generally, generally speaking, if there was something that was released, or like, or like, well, what, uh, like, what, like, raids? Like, well, that's one of the things. Okay. But you know, like, for example, if you, you know, see, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of explosives happen within the world, right. you know, as of late. Um, in different, you know, like public areas. Right. So, you know, you see the aftermath. So we see what actually happened. So you'll oh, see, wow. you know. Like footage of something actually exploding. Yeah, and like people someone like, has a bomb on themselves. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh my so, gosh. yeah. So, and I thought, okay, this is gonna be cool, ATF, yeah. And then I got there, <laughs> and I'm looking at all this stuff, and I'm like, oh my God, what did I do to myself? <laughs> So, and you're like the creative, exactly. with a bunch of quote unquote psychos. Yeah, man. It was, I mean, you know, those people who, you know, people in the government, people who have government jobs, they stay in those jobs for a really long time. So, you know, you you kind of create or, um, yeah, you, you kind of build up this tolerance, and you know, things become numb. You know, like okay. I'm not shocked, you know, for okay. example, that Trump became president because of my life as a black person. So, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, right. kind of numb. Like, oh, this is what happens every day when I go outside as a black female. Right, you, know you, see, I mean? you see just like, you have this experience where you're seeing stuff yeah. all the time and you personally exactly. experience it. So when, exactly. something, that, when it, something that seems traumatic for us happens, we're like, well, how is this possible? Yeah, it's so, like, oh, that's just every day, fool. So this is what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what's happening for you on the inside, which is that there are people that have been their entire lives is just seeing these horrors. Yeah, yeah. And so you're like fresh out of college, 21 years old, got this job, and you're like, this is terrifying. They're like, yeah, 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 sure, whatever. Next, next, next video. Exactly. <laughs> They're like Nicolas Cage in 8 millimeter, who's just like watching stuff exactly. and just like, yeah, whatever, another one, another one, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> is there a specific person you're thinking of when you say they were psycho? Oh my god, it was one agent. Man. <laughs> one agent. Like, when he would come in, like, he would just be like, <laughs> and then he would 
you know, say the, the request that he needs, because sometimes they would come in, they don't normally give you direct requests, but sometimes they come in okay. to meet the, the head of the office. Um, you know, I try to not remember all of them because it's traumatizing. So, um, but it was one agent who came in there. He was a tall guy, he was, he was nice looking, you know, built, you know, the border suits, nice like, Italian cut. Like, you know, he was nice looking, we're good on site. I was like, you're crazy, but you're cute. <laughs> He would wear his like, you know, nicely cut suits, you know, and it's like, I think they have like issue suits or something, but his is especially nice. Um, and when he would come in, it was just his, his demeanor. Like he was just like, it's like he was still like, I don't know, in, in some type of war or something like okay. that. You know, it probably was like PTSD or something. But he's like not, analyzing everything in the office. Yeah, like, like it's a he threat. Was, he like, would just be looking around and giving, you know, like, you know, this will for this request. And it's like, okay, and that's one of them. And then another person um, that was in there, he had been there for a long time. He was like a supervisor, older gentleman. Um, gray hair, he's really short, you know, and I think he had like, you know, the COVID complex or something like that. But he, he just, you know, he walked around the office and he was annoying. He wasn't psycho, he was just annoying. Um, he would walk around the office because he was a supervisor, just acting like, you know, I'm the man, I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do. You do what I say. I don't care what you say. It doesn't make any sense. Just do what I say. And it was really annoying because, you know, as an employee, you have, you know, a mind, and you can give input. Right. And but if someone's shutting it down constantly, it, you know, you get discouraged. So it's like a huge culture shock. So what happened after? Like you got, you were there, and then how did you? What What was the process of you leaving this place? Oh. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> uh, I was traumatized once again. I'm, I'm just gonna keep on saying that because that's what happened. And I decided I needed to go somewhere else. I need to go to Los Angeles and do creative stuff. Okay. <laughs> Seeing all of this. I mean, even though Hollywood, you know, blows up things all the time, it's just not real. But um, <laughs> so I decided I, I was just I was what did I do? I I was somewhere. I met someone from the show Amazing Race. Okay. And yeah. I, CBS is amazing. Yeah, I was, I was an editor. You know, I studied that, that in school. At <laughs> no, no. I met him in Georgetown <laughs> on the waterfront. Um, but I, I met him, just talking to him about what I wanted to do, and you know, because I'm a creative, and so Great. you know, I wanted to get out of there. So he basically hooked me up with a job in LA, and. You know, I was like, I got to get up out of here. But I think they were trying to get rid of me anyway because right. I was the youngest, and I was like, this is some crazy shit. And I was, you know, trying to give my opinion. But and they was like, this is some crazy shit. What yeah, audio exactly. visual help did they need? I mean, it's not like they were creating well, commercials to like show to. The this general. was for court mm -hmm. cases, so they had they would have to, you know, to prepare that like, exactly. Right. You can only show certain parts for exactly. For like you can't show everything. That's exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, Jenna, this has been amazing. Everyone have a applause for Jenna. Hey, uh, Janet, you got any, uh, got any good videos? Uh, I think I have videos of the aftermath of terrible events. I want to call them good. Well, I just, you know, the more traumatic, the better. My family and I were having a movie night on Saturday, <laughs> so, uh, you know, what kind, of, what kind of good stuff you got for me? Uh, again, I can't call it good, but there was like a, a beer truck that spilled over and people started drinking the beer after it broke open. <laughs> my kids aren't chewing. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, free beer! Oh, oh, oh. It's like, I need a lot more blood. I mean, my kids, you know, they're like in elementary school now, you know, this is family movie night. I need some entertaining shit for them, you know? Look, uh, I don't feel comfortable giving you... Mom, I, I don't want to go to family movie night. <laughs> I mean, Dad just kind of, the movies he chooses, are, they're just sort of, Traumatizing. 
Secret project. We need to take that suit back from here. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, no, it looks great. fantastic. It looks way yeah. fantastic. But it's, it should not leave the office. We're. It has left the office. It has left. Well, left I, the I'm office. unleaving it. I slept in it last night, Mike. Well, you, then, then you will not. Then we, you I can't not unsleep in it. Yeah, you can, you can unsleep in it. Listen, if you can't wear that suit to our wedding, I don't want to marry you anymore. <laughs> I tried to talk to Mike, I did. Don't even touch me <laughs> without that sorry. <laughs> That's the only thing redeeming about you. Goodbye. We locked in the club. I, I could buy one that looks exactly the same. No, it's not going to be exactly the same as that suit, you monster. <laughs> You're right. You're right. That suit was the only redeeming quality about me. What? Oh, honey. Um, who, who's that man? Who's that man? I let him into our house because I thought he had the most amazing suit. That's the only reason I called him dad. It's, it's me. <laughs> I'm just going to have to call him a human. <laughs> I thought you were a robot. That's why I loved you. Oh my god, don't touch me. Don't touch her. Don't touch her. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll I want you out of this house and you come back with that. <laughs> I, I ordered a BLT, and the menu says BLT, but it yes. says avocado on it. Like, there's, there's no A up there. It's just BLT. And avocado. <laughs> Lots of people don't know about the and part of our, 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 our sandwiches. Can't you just add the A up there? I mean, the BLTA? Yeah, yeah, that's a great suggestion. I just worked the register, and I'm going to leave in three to six months, so... Uh... <laughs> I've 
heard about it. I haven't even heard about it. Really? Yeah. Uh, Georgetown. Tell me, what have you heard? Well, I mean, uh, I heard the drinks are really expensive. I've been saving up, I've been saving up to come to Georgetown. Yeah, they can be expensive. Unless, you know, you have the right connections. Do you by any chance have a degree from film school? I do. I just got it from New York. I have a degree from film school. <laughs> On Georgetown. Oh, really? Yep, that's right. Why well, didn't anyone tell me this? Well, you don't know until you get here. <laughs> I should have come to Georgetown sooner. <laughs> Well, and I've heard that people here have, you know, really high-powered jobs and great connections. And What's up with Georgetown? Uh, nothing special. I mean, I, what's, what do they have that I don't have, okay? You first grew American U. It was great. I mean... We like you a lot. You know, you, you wouldn't get it if you haven't been there. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. I just choose to be here. It's nicer here. It's bigger. You're never going to meet anyone from L.A. here. What's <laughs> that supposed to be? <laughs> Just say, what kind of Georgetown bullshit? <laughs> I meet people from L.A. when I go to Georgetown. You don't you know meet people from L.A. No, you don't. Nobody from L.A. comes to D.C. willingly. They travel to Georgia. <laughs> oh, Janet. Um, um, so I have a first date tonight. And um, I was wondering if I could have a couple clips. Like, do you have anything like really juicy and gnarly? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, this violates lots of things. Uh, you want something kind of gory? Yeah, totally gory. Like, the more people dismembered, the better. And um, yeah, preferably if you could just put it on my um, jump drive, I'd love it. Thanks. Uh, sure, just one second. Uh, dear God. <laughs> Please free me from the seller's job. <laughs> you know the rest. <laughs> what were you doing in there, Janet? I was just giving thanks. <laughs> and praying for the release of hell. I said it! I said it! <laughs> wow, Janet, that seems really deep. Look, I came here today to have to do sound effects and to make people happy. <laughs> Not to spread around gore and like just this like sick torture porn stuff. You guys are disgusting! Give me a minute. I need it. Oh, shit. You know what's up, Sarah? Just give me a baby for my just one more just five seconds. Wow. Thank you, you're a junkie! You're a junkie! Give me a minute, you're a junkie! I just want to see it for my flower! I just want to get my junkie high. <laughs> This is harder for me, but it's the best thing to go cold turkey and go through the withdrawal sy symptoms <laughs> of not having gory videos. Sorry. What are you sorry? You pulled across a rope in front of me? Yes, I did. <laughs> I went to a nightclub and stole a rope. And now it's here. Look, it's for your own good. Come on. Don't do this to me. I've got the everything. Janet, remove that rope. <laughs> That's right, Your Honor. Um, we do we do have uh, some audiovisual evidence that we'd like to present. All right, I just need to eat this banana. I went for a run right before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Your, Your Honor, I would I would watch this on an empty stomach. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna want to put the banana down. Objection, Your Honor. He's clearly flirting with you again. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Sustained. <laughs> Flirting is my favorite part. <laughs> I'm sorry, I like it! Counselor, <laughs> that's not my fault if not everybody has a suit like this. That's true, that is a really nice suit. Objection! He's, he's, he's complimenting himself, Your Honor. This is part of the flirting. You're right, it's a thing. 
be dishonored if you would. If you go into video, if you use this reel-to-reel uh, -reel video camera, <laughs> it's authentic uh, Panasonic black and white film. <laughs> also, if you go into audio production, I'd be honored if you use this phonograph. It's one of the original ones <laughs> made by Alex and her grandpa Bell. <laughs> You can't let me see one of those clips. Let me see one of those clips now. I want to hear something. Gross. You're a junkie.